What happened by 1936? Does anybody know? We instituted Social Security system, and you and I and our children and our children's children were pledged as collateral on the debt of our government to the Federal Reserve. And that's where we're at today. It took 20 years to make this country bankrupt, and since then, our government has operated under emergency powers of our government. It is not the president that makes the decision in this country. It's the Secretary of Treasury who turns around and is put in there by the Federal Reserve to manage the bankruptcy. We've been in bankruptcy ever since. So to print $700 billion and to give it away, how do they get away with it? The manager of the bankruptcy is told by the Federal Reserve this is the way to go. That's where we're at today. Yes, we should point out, Congressman Ron Paul now has a huge amount of sponsors for a bill in the House of Representatives to abolish the private Federal Reserve crime syndicate. In 1913, the money power of the country was taken away from the people by constitutional privilege it belongs with the Congress, but it was given up in the Federal Reserve Act. The Federal Reserve is no more federal than Federal Express, but yet it has the power to determine the direction of use of money in our economy. If we could take that power back and put the Federal Reserve under Treasury, we start to be in a position <coughs> of being able to control monetary policy on behalf of the United States people. The Federal Reserve is totally private, and Alan Greenspan two weeks ago on PBS on Lair News Hour said on record that they are above the law, the Congress, the President, everyone. No court can do anything. We run America. What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Notice what Greenspan is saying. Greenspan is saying the Federal Reserve is beyond the law. And in reality, they are in practice beyond the law. Nobody, as far as I know, has ever audited the Federal Reserve. One of the first things we ought to do when we nationalize the Fed is go in there and find out the audit. Who stole money? Who engaged in corruption? There's a whole series of people going back to Volcker, to Greenspan, to Bernanke, uh, and so forth. Think of the arrogance of private group of banks that have bankrupted the nation by design so they can repo the country. A private group of banks that loaned us our own money back are telling us they're above the law. Right. You are not above the law, criminals. No one is above the law. No one is above the law, and the private Federal Reserve sure as hell isn't either. Since the, the founding of the Federal Reserve back under Woodrow Wilson, uh, the Federal Reserve has struck out three times. They didn't stop the crash of 1929. They didn't stop the banking panic of 1932-1933. And now they are the cause of the derivatives crisis because they're the ones who inflicted derivatives on the world with Alan Greenspan. Instead of our economy being about goods and services and real products and manufacturing, it's all about these guys, the private Federal Reserve that masquerades as a government entity who controls the issuance of currency and credit. They're the ones that have cut off the liquidity in the market. They told us have a debt-based economy. Then they cut it off once they get us under their thumb and implode the economy so they can consolidate it. And that's what they're doing right now. I mean, it's, it's in their own documents. It's in their own statements. They claim, give us unlimited power, give us trillions of dollars of the Baker bailout bill that's already $5 trillion, not $850 billion, as they say, uh, and, and we'll get the economy going. But they're hoarding the money and buying up other banks that aren't part of the Federal Reserve, buying up insurance companies, buying up roads, infrastructures, media empires, defense contractors. What the banks do is they implode an economy by cutting off 
uh, credit. And then once things really fall to a low, and they know the low because then they buy everything up and start then putting more money back into the economy, and then they build it back up. So they build us up and then shear us, build us up and shear us. And they're getting ready. All over the world, they're always shearing some country, imploding it. Comes out in their own IMF and World Bank documents. That's just the foreign arm of the same cartel. And these are the people who claim to be the saviors of the economy, the people who have created every important crisis in the past hundred years, the Federal Reserve. So it's illegal, it's unconstitutional, and it's a failure. And I think the failure is what everybody can see right now. Yeah, what they do is that they make you think Clinton's evil in running things, then, oh, Bush will save us, and then, oh, Bush was evil. Uh, now we'll be saved by Barack Obama, but he's just a puppet. But as we get deeper into this phase, uh, w when they implode the economy, they have all the money and all the control, and then, but they also like to pose as the savior. So Obama is meant to be the savior during the Depression, and he'll save us with a million person. He said it's bigger, bigger than our military, domestic spy force, a three million person environmental spy force. So giving people these jobs to be government bureaucrats and spies to go out and manage uh, the other uh, you know, 290 something million Americans. And so this is classical fascism. The communists also do it. Any vertically integrated command and control authoritarian system does this. So they're openly following what the same group of banks did in Germany, Russia, you know, it's in the Communist Manifesto to have a private central bank because the private central bankers actually wrote the ideas that they had Marx and Engels put out. People go, well, why would the banks want communism? It doesn't exist. They rape us. They consolidate us. They put us into work brigades. They make us slaves. And they say, it's a people's paradise. Look at it. Boy, you're really doing good. And then they transfer all the wealth of the nation offshore. The globalists are outside all the nations. That gives them safety, and they play countries off against each other. And so that's what we're facing and dealing with. And so they're bringing in classical, hardcore tyranny in the U.S. But we have the Internet. We've grown our numbers. The alternative media has exploded. That's why they're trying to move in to shut down and regulate and tax the web. But it's too late for them. Uh, they're, they're playing in the 19th century, 20th century rules. It's the 21st century the century of resistance to tyranny. And so it's going to be one hell of a fight uh, with the people and free humanity on one side and the New World Order on the other. And every one of you out there counts, needs to be involved in this fight like nothing you've been involved with before because this is life and death. Everything depends on exposing these people. Everything depends on showing the people that this is the New World Order, this is the criminals. We're dealing with the king rats here, the people that are carrying out tyranny worldwide. And either they fall or we fall. Either worldwide darkness and a new age of tyranny and oppression and with a scientific overlay or a new age of liberty and freedom and a new renaissance. The choice, the choice is the people's out there. Okay, we can tell you what's going on. You can check it out for yourself and find out it's true. But don't wait. Investigate now. Get involved now. Go out there and reach out now. We don't have time. If you're looking for the solution, look in the mirror. Look right into the mirror because you out there, men, women, old, young, black, white, doesn't matter. It's going to be up to you if they win or if liberty succeeds and the people have a chance of having any future. These are cold-blooded eugenicists. These are cold-blooded people who think they're God, think that they're our masters, and think that we're animals. These are the guys that funded Lenin and Stalin and Hitler and Mao. These are the guys, it's all on record, that bankroll this stuff. They are hardcore vicious, and they must be resisted. Up until about the Kennedy assassination and the beginning of the war in Vietnam, the United States is a very powerful engine for world progress. It's the assassinations, the Kennedy assassination, and the others in the 1960s, the beginning of the Vietnam War, and the beginning of the absolute domination of the Wall Street group over every other interest. Nobody else counts except the Wall Street money masters. That has now made the United States into uh, no longer a force for progress, but something very different, often a force for destruction in the world. That doesn't need to remain that way. The interest of the American people is to fight to take your government back from Wall Street and make the United States a force for progress in the world, which we easily could do if we could just break the power of the people behind Obama. The main banks of Europe, which were started by Adam Weishaupt and, and, and Rothschild, the Bank Nationale de Paris, the Bank of England, the, the Bank of Italy, have all financed the messianic and, and, and war leaders of the last 200 years. Napoleon, Lenin,